Release the Kraken! Good afternoon fellow game designers, Ron here with Lame Duck Studios. And uh, in this tutorial we'll be looking at how to make a door using our blueprint system. So I went ahead and created a blueprint folder. I'm just in an uh, example uh, third person map here. And in my blueprints I'm going to go ahead and right click blueprint class. I'm going to make an actor. And I'm going to call this door. Now I do have other doors in here so I just can't call it the same thing. So I'm going to say door uh, BP for blueprint. Go ahead and open that up. And for this we're just going to use oops. Uh, and for this we're just going to use the uh, oh if you end up with this just go ahead and hit full blueprint. Okay. For this we're going to use the uh, the cube. So I'm just going to come down grab a cube and I'm going to size it up to make a door. So I'm just going to assume my door is 100 units wide. I don't want it to be that thick. Let's go ahead and do the Y. Just scale that down to about there. That's a pretty beefy door. And then maybe a height of the tall. Cool. Now I'm just going to move this up to the ground. So it's kind of hovering right there. Good enough. So this is going to be our door. And for this we will need an overlap. So let's go ahead and add components. Come down and do a box collision. Now your collision box, if it comes in as a child of your cube, um, it's okay. Let's go ahead and not have this a child. We're going to bring this up. I'm going to come up to here. And when I drop it, you see where it says drop here to see available actions. I'm just going to do that. And then I'm going to do an attach. Now that way I can size up my box. So I'll just scale it. So it's just a little bit bigger. We want this big enough so the player can actually touch this and not get whacked by the door. So I'm going to go ahead and just make this wide enough out here. So it really depends on where how this is going to open. In our case, I'm just going to make it so the door opens up and down, but you can have it open however you like. The key issue here is making sure that the widget is not center. So since the widget in this case is center, our door would actually spin like a revolving door. To fix that, you just make your door somewhere else, uh, like in Maya or whatever. But this should be fine, right? So I'm going to go ahead and go to my event graph. Let's go ahead and nuke all this stuff. I'm going to right click and create a timeline. Timeline. And down here we have add timeline. I'll call this door timeline. So what's really cool about a timeline is you can use these to do basic animations. Instead of having to figure out all the math in 3D space of where an object's going to be, we can use our timeline to kind of manipulate that. So I'm going to go ahead and double click on my timeline. And it's going to open up this blank canvas. And you can see it says door timeline. And over to the left, we have this little F with a plus sign that's going to add just a float track here. And then to add a key, I can right click and add a key. Or if I have my mouse somewhere, hold down the shift key and then click, it'll drop one in. So I'll add that one and hold shift, click again, drop that one in. On the first one, just go ahead and click on it, go up to time, and I set that to zero, so it's going to snap it over here. And for the value, I'm going to do that as zero as well. Because when the when the game starts, the door hasn't moved, so zero is perfectly fine. And then I'm going to grab the next one. This one is going to have a value of one, or a time index of one, sorry, and then a value of one. So what we've just created is a scalar where from this point to the next point um, is zero to one. So it's whatever the distance is from zero to one, that would be your 100%. To frame up on this, you can either click this here, this little horizontal arrow, and this vertical arrow, and that will kind of snap our frame. Or you can press, uh, click in here and just press the F key, and it will frame up for you. And you can see there's our uh, transition. Okay. Go ahead and compile that. Come back into my event graph. And now I have a play. I have my reverse. And, oh, I didn't name my track. Let's go ahead and do that. Double click on the timeline. And go up to track here. I'm going to right click on that, rename. 
I was gonna call this door animation. There we go. That way we know what it is. So for this we need off of update, we're gonna do set set actor. We'll do relative location. And this comes in with a uh, a vector for our new uh, our new relative location, but we want to know where we were before we go anywhere. So we need two variables. Let's get an add one. We're going to name this variable start location. I'm going to change this to a vector type. And then let's do another one. We're going to call this end location. End location. Let's make this instance editable. And we'll also do a show 3D widget. Compile. And we'll have this kind of open up. So we have our start and our end. And we're going to blend between these two. So I'm going to go ahead and drag off of here. Let's do lerp, L-E-R-P. That's linear interpolate if you're not sure. And we're going to do a linear interpolate for vectors. So lerp vector. So what this does is it blends between A and B using an alpha value. That's all it does plug my value in and then I need to know my start and my end so my start location is value A my end location is value B simple enough and it's gonna get this translation or its positional uh, information from our timeline so let's come back here and let's do a variable uh, let's call this is open change this to a boolean and for it is open drag this in do a set if our door is open we're gonna do a thing and if it's not open we're gonna do something else so let's go ahead and do control W and we'll have two of these okay one of them is gonna be true one's gonna be false and we need a branch so I'm gonna right click make a branch okay and the condition for our branch is gonna be our is open so I'm gonna drag that in put that here okay so if our door is open, then, so if this is true, we're going to set this to false, and then we're going to close the door. So that's going to go into reverse. If our door is not open, so if this is false, so if it's not open, we're going to set it to true. That way our door will open, and we're going to drag this one to open, or play. Now we just need something to tell this to do a thing. And what we're going to use is this box. So I'm just going to go ahead and right click. I'm going to do on actor begin overlap. So I'm just going to grab this one. It's simpler. I'm going to plug that in. So whatever actor ends up colliding with this, it's going to open the door. So I'm going to hit compile. And let's go ahead and drag our door into our scene. So here's my door. And there it is. I'm going to position it 90 degrees is good for you. And drag this to about there. Door doesn't fit, but it's okay. But you will see here, uh, we now have a little diamond. Do you see a little diamond right there? If I click on that, it says ending location that is going to be where my door is going to end up whenever I step on this. So I'm going to go ahead and just move this locator up here. So I'm going to have my door open up and down. All right. Well, oh, it goes up, but all right, let's go in to our door here. Um, oh, we did a set actor uh, relative. Let's do this as uh, set <laughs> relative location. Uh, let's make sure we do the one for our cube here. And to make this make sense, let's go ahead and rename the cube door. Call that door. There we go. And plug that one in. All right, compile that. And we... So it works, but we had another problem. You see how it dipped down through the, through the ground there? It's doing that because of the location of the uh, scene root. So let's go back in. And you can actually see it here. So the scene root is in the middle here, but the door is up here. So it's assuming zero is that spot. But we can fix that. Let's go in. Go ahead and select our door 
and then come over to location. You can see that our door's location in the Z is like 110. Um, pro tip, if you right click on the word location or any of these actually, you get an option to copy it. So if I right click on location, I can copy the vector, right? I'm gonna come down to my start location. I'm gonna right click where it says start location here on the right, and I'm gonna do paste, and it's gonna paste in all my values. Hit compile. So now our door will start up here. Now it doesn't close because you haven't told it to. Because we did this on an on component uh, overlap. So let's do this this way. Let's come in. And instead of using this particular situation, uh, this one's going to open the door. One of them's going to close it. So I'm going to come in and do event uh, on actor end overlap. And this one, when we walk away, will close it. So I'm going to drag this in like that. And it should close it. So now when I step up, opens, step away, closes. Hey, very simple door. Now the advantage of having a door as a blueprint is you can copy and paste it. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this. I'm going to hold down the Alt key and just drag it somewhere else. Move it into the world over here. Let's say I need to get through this chamber as well. So I'll put that here. Right? And then maybe I need a door here. And remember, I'm just pressing the end key to snap that to the ground. All right, so if I go up to this door, shrink, it opens. And then I go up to this one, right? So instead of having to, to redo the same code again and again, by using the blueprint, I can just set it wherever I want, which really saves up on time and makes your workflow a lot nicer. So anyway, if you like this tutorial, go ahead and hit the uh, thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you have uh, suggestions for future videos, leave them down in the comments. And I will see you next time.